Hi everybody, this is part two of a two-part video about how to make the pained and puffed sleeves for the fitted English gown pattern from the Tudor Tailor. If you missed part one, be sure to click here to see how I created the foundation of the sleeve. Now we're ready to create the panes and the puff, put the sleeve together, and attach it to the rest of the garment. Enjoy! Okay, so speaking of the historical method of lining, that is how you're supposed to do these panes as well. You're supposed to take the front piece, fold over all the seam allowances, press it down, take your lining piece, fold over the seam allowances a little bit further, press them down, and then place them together and hand stitch all the way around the edge. And I was just like, that's way too much work. What I decided to do instead is just to do it the modern way and bag line them. So I'm going to sew around most of it, leave a small opening, turn them inside out, press them, um, and then hand sew the bottom close. A little trick I figured out to help me bag line these is I'm actually going to go in and mark where my seam allowances are just at the corners and that is going to help me when I'm sewing it to know when to stop and put my needle down and turn the piece. The little marks I made and that's just at every corner so it's going to help me know where to turn. At all your corners don't forget to do about one stitch on a 45 degree angle of the corner. It's going to make it turn more nicely. can see I just have a small opening on the bottom that I'll use to turn it. Before I turn it, I am going to clip all the seams. Usually you would just clip the corners, but since these are such small pieces, I wanted to trim as much off them as possible. So I'm using my pinking shears to clip all the corners and to also trim. You could also probably go about it with just smaller seam allowances in general, but I like a good healthy amount of seam allowance to help the fabric not get caught up in my feed dogs. Now what I'm going to do is go and press this. And there we have it, just a good old fashioned, but not old fashioned enough for this period bag line. And I still have the bottom open, so I'm going to slip stitch that closed. I'm also going to be sewing some trim down along the edges. Here's a piece that I already finished, the magic of food shows. So we're going to skip ahead a step and sew gathering lines along the top and bottom edge of our puff piece and then we are going to sew the two ends of the puff piece together. And I have all of the gathering lines sewn into the puff layer. Now I can gather the puff layer down so the top of the puff layer measurement matches the top of the foundation measurement and the bottom of the, found of the puff measurement matches the bottom of the foundation measurement. Now the bottom of the foundation is not gathered but the bottom of the puff will be. Alrighty, now we have the puff piece gathered, we have the foundation piece gathered. If we were following the directions, we would have the boning pieces in the boning channels, and the next step would be, I'm just flipping this so that my raw edges would be inside, you slide the foundation piece inside of the puff piece. That wasn't clear to me in the directions. I read it to my friend who sews a lot and she said it was clear to her, but it wasn't clear to me. So you do slide the foundation piece inside the puff piece. And if you're following the directions, then you would pin these together. And then you would take your completed panes, except I think the top portions would not be, and bottom portions would not be completed. And you would lay the panes on and pin them in place as well. Then when you sewed the sleeve into the garment, you would trap the panes in your seam. And when you sewed the bottom band on, you would trap the bottom of the panes in your seam. And that is why I wanted to do it this different way. I just felt that that would be a lot, a lot of fabric trapped in my seams to have the panes sewn in there as well. And on the bottom of the directions of the pattern, they do provide an alternate historical method in which they say, according to some effigies, it appears that the panes were pleated individually and sewn on after the sleeve was already set in the garment. So that's what I'm doing. And then instead of sewing the sleeve in and binding the seam allowances, I'm going to finish the sleeve itself and then sew the finished sleeve to the finished garment. The way that I'm going to finish the seam is to bag line again and use the puff 
to finish the end of the foundation. To help you orient, because at least with my fabrics, there's no right side on either of the fabrics, I have the puff inside of the foundation in order to sew this, and on both of them, the raw edges are not touching, because in the end, I want these seams, the raw edges of these seams, to be touching, so they're not touching right now, so they're kind of right sides together, and I will flip them, and then they will be wrong sides together, but then actually the correct side will be out. Depending on your comfort level with sewing, you will want to use more or less pins. I only have four pins in there, but if you don't have a lot of experience sewing fabric that is down like this, you're going to want a lot of pins. So now, when I flip it, I have the beautiful puff. The foundation is on the inside. You can see that the boning channels are also on the inside of the sandwich that we've made. So the boning channels will be hidden by the puff. And we have this nice, clean edge, which we will sew to the jacket. The bottom edge will be trapped and cleaned up by the bottom band. Before we sew the bottom band on, we have to insert the boning into the boning channels. If you remember, these were supposed to be inserted earlier as per the instructions, but I found it really hard to sew my first puff when I had the boning in it, so I decided for the second to leave the boning out. So how we're going to do that is we're just going to open up our little sandwich so that we can see all the boning channels we've sewn. And the first bone to insert is the long bone. This is tricky. I'm going to start feeding it through my channel. And where you have the places that are crossing the vertical channels, you have to be careful because the bone can slip out of the casing there since it's not sewn down until the bone comes out the other end. What needs to happen is that these two loose ends need to be crossed over each other and tucked back within the channels and then taped together so that they don't move. So I'm going to expand as much as I can to make sure that our sleeve won't look skimpy. In the directions, they say to use something called zinc oxide tape or plaster tape. When I went to Walgreens, the pharmacy people had no idea what zinc oxide tape was. And from our Googling, we figured out that it's probably really similar to what we in the U.S. would call KT tape or kinesiology therapy tape. So I've got some KT tape right here. And I'm going to cut a really small strip of it off. So see, just a very small strip. And now, and you can see we're helped out by the fact that the casing doesn't go all the way to the seam allowance. We have a lot of working area there. Once I've made sure the bones are expanded all the way, I'm going to pinch them together and use this very small piece of tape to tape them where they're meant to be. Now I can slide it more out of the casing and use more tape to give it a more secure hold. What I'm not going to do, however, is tape over the ends, and that is simply because I found that I could not slide the ends into the casing with the tape applied. But I'm just going to trust the casing to hold this end down, and the other end is already tucked under the rest of the boning, so that's not an issue. And so since we left a large enough opening, we don't have to slide any tape under the casing. The directions also say to tape the ends of your small bones, and I'm just assuming that's if you were to use metal bones or something because with wood bones or plastic bones, you can file the edges down or melt the edges down to make them soft so they won't poke through your fabric. So I'm going to insert these into them. You can see there's three different lengths. Um, the longest one goes in the middle, and then you just kind of can eyeball the, where the shortest one goes and where the middle one goes. The fact that we've gathered the top of the foundation bends those bones back into each other so we get this really lovely globe shape rounded out. So now what I'm going to do is go back to the machine and just stitch and backstitch over the ends of my boning channels to hold the bones in and then we'll be able to sew the band on. One thing that I didn't mention before I went and sewed the bones in the boning channels is you're going to want to switch to your zipper foot on your machine just so that you can get really close to where the bones are and not sew through them um, but sew really close to them and have them feed under the zipper foot well. So now the foundation is done. I'm going to flip the puff back over it. This is why I didn't use wood boning or reed boning because it would have snapped by now with all the bending 
and finagling that I have to do. The puff is longer than the foundation and that's just to add more puff to it, so line up the bottom. And I have my band. And if you remember from the section where I was talking about cutting them out, instead of doing the way the instructions have you doing the band, which is you have a piece about this big, you sew it down, flip it, fold your bottom seam allowance up, and then hand stitch the lining into it, I am just going to do a single piece band. So I started with a really wide band, and what I just did is used my um, iron to press it up halfway, and then on one of the edges I took a scant half inch, so slightly less than half an inch, maybe three eighths, and ironed that down as well. This will be the inside of the band, and this longer piece will get sewn to the outside. And that means that once we sew this longer piece on with the half inch seam allowance, our inside piece will be slightly longer than that, so we'll be able to easily sew it down. So the first thing I'm going to do is sew the band in a circle, and probably press my seam allowances open, and then fold it back down. And then we will take the long edge and lay the long edge, the raw edge of the long edge, along the raw edges of the bottom of the puff, and sew it all down. You've seen how that we have the bones in, it becomes kind of a nightmare to work with. Make sure you have your zipper foot on your machine so that you can again sew really close to the bones. And I've got the long end of the band pinned on, gonna try to sew it on without too much trouble. Especially towards the under part of the sleeve where all your seams are, it gets really hard to work because it's really close to the horizontal, the long bone, so it requires a good bit of squishing to get it out under the machine. Don't poke yourself on your pins. So now we can flip the band down and where we had pressed it before, fold it right back up. And you can see we have all our raw edges here, and once we fold this down, all of our raw edges will be nicely covered. So you can just hand sew that down with some slip stitches or some whip stitching. Just be careful not to sew all the way through the puff, just sew it, anchor it down to the foundation. You can see here what the band looks like, all slip stitch in. So now it's all nice and finished. Our top edge is finished as well, and you can sew it into the armhole of the jacket. This took me about three hours to do. It was a pain in my butt and in my fingers. There's just a lot of fabric on both sides, which makes me even happier that I now have this nice, beautiful flat join that doesn't ha add any bulkiness. So I'll show you the inside now. You can see all of the little whip stitches that I did to attach the sleeve to the jacket. So basically what I did is I had the jacket laid inside out on top of the sleeve and I did a bunch of little whip stitches all along the edge. Very tiny. You gotta do a lot of them so that it's strong. It gives me this really nice finish on the inside that I love. It's super flat. There's no bulk. It won't be annoying under my arms. And I have a lovely sleeve. So now the last step will be to sew the panes on. Here is the attached sleeve with all the panes attached. Now in the pattern there was no indication of where to place the panes on the sleeve such as notches or other markings. The panes were of course numbered and had a front and back mark so I knew which order they went on the sleeve but I wasn't sure about how close to make them. You'll see that I didn't actually pleat the top of the sleeves. When I was looking at pictures of other people I saw some people who had pleated them but a lot of people who hadn't. And I found that when I didn't pleat them, I was able to achieve a nice connection all around the edge of the sleeve on both the top and the bottom. These panes don't actually extend to the bottom part of the sleeve, and that was one thing that kind of got me, but of course this is a really small area, so that makes sense. One thing that kind of bothers me is some sleeves seem to have a lot more room between the foundation and how far they come out than others. This one is, in fact, is quite tight, but if you moved it back, then you would have a lot, you wouldn't have panes in the front here. And if you move it forward, you run out of even more room. So it was difficult and I had to play around with it. I even sewed them on and ripped them off a couple times trying to figure out the exact placement before I finally figured it out. 
You can see here that I have my fourth pane aligned pretty much on the middle of my shoulder seam, but I did move the shoulder seam, so I don't know if this is exactly what you might do if you didn't alter the shoulder seam of the pattern as much as I did. These are just some clips of the bodice with the sleeve attached on my mannequin. The mannequin isn't perfectly sized because, of course, it doesn't conform to the corset base I'm wearing underneath, but it gives a really good view of just how puffy the sleeves are on their own. I want to be clear that I'm thrilled with the garment this pattern is turning out. I just don't think that the pattern directions are very beginner friendly. That's why I created this video so that other people like me who may have been confused can also enjoy the benefits of this gorgeous pattern. Please give a thumbs up if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this as well as sewing in other areas such as contemporary and home decor.